All right, doing something just a little bit different this morning. It's like 9.55 on Sunday, February 9th, 2020. I wanted to talk about something that is pretty important that I talk about every once in a while, but not very often. So you can see I've got my um, YouTube home screen going on over here. Um, but what I wanted to to click on is this section here, which I pretty much never click on. I probably clicked on this maybe twice in the last two years. Mainly because when I click on this, it just kind of disgusts and depresses me. This is YouTube's sort of like most popular videos kind of page, like what it used to be. I guess videos that get the most views or get the most attention on YouTube. And these are basically given the status because of YouTube's algorithms, which have been designed by, you know, Google's computer scientists and engineers and supposedly some of the smartest people in the whole world. And uh, I think it's pretty obvious when you just uh, do sort of a, a quick overview or in cursory inspection of these videos, there's a very clear sort of like trend that you see. And of course, these are trending videos. So that kind of just stands to reason. However, I think there's a little more going on here than just the obvious. But um, one thing you'll notice right away is that uh, like these videos have over a million views usually. Well, this one only has 255,000 uh, that it got in 10 hours. This one got 4.6 million views in one day. And this one got 2 million views in 22 hours. And uh, if you if you look uh, just really quickly, very obvious, there's a incredibly provocative and you might think well produced thumbnail with uh, a person's face very prominently in the center with some sort of like items or actions that are happening with lots of finger pointing and holding things and red arrows with red text, very graphic and obvious. This one's a little more low-key, but still obviously a, an actual thumbnail. Now if we just go down here, down the list, here's like a creator that's rising. These uh, gameplay videos with very large neon text in front of each thumbnail that pretty much hides whatever's going on behind. A low production value, but still clearly working pretty well. And uh, these videos pretty much the same more or less similar formula but humans with weird faces doing very like dramatic graphic actions with bright uh, primary colors in the background kind of um, yeah see so like it's clear that there's a very specific type of action or red arrows pointy um, prominent objects in the center. Yeah, so YouTube has done a lot of <clears throat> studies on this kind of thing, this phenomenon, and they've released like guidelines for how to grow your channel and stuff, and they actually recommend a lot of these techniques, not quite as overtly as are in these videos. Um, in addition to a lot of the user-generated content, you see a lot of the sort of like mainstream celebrity content which is really common now, like uh, WWE or um, ESPN, a lot of mainstream artists. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you could look at all this stuff and, and say that it's uh, good or bad. It really um, is, is fairly subjective. I mean, the only thing that's really obvious is that people are doing a rather specific thing in almost every video in order to get attention and rise in the ranks. Uh, lots of uh, quasi-pornographic stuff or uh, uh, suggestive, sexually suggestive 
things are also used, although not as much since YouTube um, basically uh, created more aggressive rules to try to limit abuse and uh, exposure to minors and stuff like that on the site. So yeah, um, kind of a mixed bag. I'd say it's better than it was a couple years ago. Uh, this whole section of this video that I'm making was just an introduction to something that I wrote uh, the other day that I wanted to share with everyone, which is um, this right here, which is one of the questions that I filled out for YouTube's creator survey, and I wanted to read this out loud. It's kind of a wall of text, so a lot of people might just skim over it, but um, this was an answer to the question that YouTube posed in the survey was, how satisfied are you as a creator with YouTube as a service today? And I clicked the somewhat satisfied box because that was pretty accurate to how I was feeling, and this is what I wrote. So now I'm going to read it out loud as like an open letter to YouTube and the community. So, <clears throat> My biggest concern is that the way YouTube constantly promotes and prioritizes its most popular channels and videos. Users who have hundreds of thousands to millions of subscribers and get a similar number of views on each video are always getting the most attention and exposure on every section of the site. I get a lot of this. Yes, these users are often popular for a reason. And yes, they are going to almost categorically be making the most money in ad revenue for YouTube. However, these users have already achieved success and popularity. They don't need any help once they've reached the pinnacle of celebrity status on the site. The people who do need help are the hundreds of millions of lesser known users who still create amazing content. We all know this is a problem that YouTube has had for years. If you look hard enough, you will find fantastic channels with content that is easily 10 times better and higher quality than YouTube's top 100 most popular channels. But these creators are laboring in relative obscurity. Many are lucky to get a few hundred, much less 100,000 views on a single video. Why is this? It's not because their channels aren't great. It's not because these creators are not working hard. It's because they're not gaming the system, or alternately, it's because the system simply isn't smart or sophisticated enough to recognize their value and potential. Another way of looking at that, at <coughs> it is that YouTube's rankings algorithms systematically marginalize channels that are not already super popular. This discrimination takes place in an environment where popularity is most frequently decided by who can produce the best clickbait title or sexually suggestive thumbnail. These channels often d undeservedly go viral, and that virality snowballs into some kind of larger audience. YouTube plays a critical role in this process by facilitating this effect by giving these users more exposure site-wide. YouTube rewards this sanctioned audience abuse and effectively punishes those who don't rely on cheap tricks to grow their audience. Only an extreme minority of very lucky users are able to build critical mass organically, and this is no surprise given that they are directly competing with users who engage in misleading or ethically dubious practices. But in the real world, views don't translate to quality and popularity doesn't guarantee that a channel is worth watching. YouTube's ranking system is blind to this struggle. In fact, I'd say it turns a blind eye to it, despite having made a record 15 billion in profits. So yeah, that's how I feel about YouTube at the moment. How about taking a closer look at how the ranking system functions as a whole, stop blindly rewarding bad actors, and start shifting the balance of attention back to where it belongs? on the hundreds of millions of channels that make YouTube great, rather than the several hundred that make it the most money. So that was my answer to that question, and I answered a bunch of the other questions too, uh, with uh, 
slightly variations of, of that response. However, um, I wanted to say there was one question at the end, um, which was kind of about uh, YouTube as a whole, and I basically uh, answered that question in a way saying that, like, I love YouTube. Like, I care about YouTube because I love it, because I'm a YouTuber to some extent. I mean, I'm not like a career YouTuber like a lot of these people, but um, I, I have enjoyed the service for over a decade. Um, I've gotten a lot of use out of it. It provides something that is truly valuable, and I think it's a worthy service. Um, so I thank you, YouTube, for existing. Like, it's wonderful that we have this opportunity to share so much of our creativity with a global audience. Um, I just, I want to say that, like, the strength, the true strength of YouTube isn't, like, the top hundred creators or whatever. It's, it's the, it's the hundreds of millions of people on YouTube, just ordinary users, who make up the majority of what the site really is. It's true character and personality, and it's, it's value, in my opinion. And uh, those users simply aren't getting the level of attention and um, uh, assistance that I think they deserve. And uh, in a sense, that's not necessarily YouTube's fault. That's capitalism's fault, you know, because capitalism is constantly putting pressure on... Um, services to make profits and I know Alphabet and Google are definitely not immune to that phenomena and uh, so yeah there's there's a lot going on so I don't think it's fair to just make it completely one-sided and put all the onus on YouTube but um, I'd say it's also would be unfair to say that YouTube doesn't have a problem that really they could definitely work on and improve the site and if any of you watching were back uh, in the in the day in the very beginning of, of YouTube and you, you joined the site and you saw what was going on it was a lot more um, organic and uh, exciting and you would go onto the front page and you never know what you would see on there because uh, it was basically just uh, ordinary people who had just totally regular channels that um, could become popular on the site organically and I'd, I don't know exactly what was different back then but it was a lot different and <clears throat> in terms of who could sort of rise to the top and uh, that's kind of gone now and you basically just see kind of the same people over and over again like look at this guy seriously I mean Yeah, I mean, I don't really even need to say anything, do I? Just this thumbnail kind of tells it all. This is, this is sort of iconic of what's been going on on YouTube over the last, like, I don't know, eight, nine years. And like these family channels, this stuff honestly is, is pretty creepy. Um, I'd say I remember the first time that this really took off on YouTube, um, like Shay Carl, who basically Philip DeFranco, who was kind of like a some some might say debatably a YouTube actor plant who basically was only popular because YouTube like gave him a hand up and then he t gave his friend a hand up and his friend was doing like these family channels and like in with his family and endangering his children and like pimping out his underage daughters it was really disgusting like honestly and I feel like that trend is kind of continuing in the modern YouTube, and it's it's just tragic. Like uh, YouTube has so much more potential, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I think maybe my my standards are just too high for the for the service for something that's like a global sort of lowest common denominator 
platform in a lot of ways. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. This was a different video, more serious. I hope uh, it's not too traumatizing for my loyal viewers. But um, yeah, YouTube, please just take a hard look at what's going on on the site. I know you've been doing that a lot lately, but maybe take an even harder look and try to think about what you can do to to make things better. Thanks for watching.